history. Please welcome back Indianapolis Colts running back Naeem Hines. Oh, my yeah. man. <laughs> Naeem, what's up? How you doing, man? I'm happy to be back on. You I'm glad. Him. I'm glad that you're here. This is my twin. Look at it. We look alike. All right, now let me take these glasses off. So you're That's handsome a good guy, by the guy way. Now listen, obviously you got, you got some football left. We get it. You guys are in the postseason. It's been an eventful, memorable rookie year for you. Is there a moment that stands out that you're proud of? I think just uh, being a part of history is what I'm most proud of. Uh, you know, starting off one and five and being the third team to, you know, make the playoffs and uh the last game of the year, we had to win to get in, and we showed up and did that. So I'm really excited about that. I can tell, as are we. Naheem and I, not twins. However, Naheem, I'm, not, I'm just going to shoot it straight with this. You guys are going to win this game in Kansas City. I'm not asking you. I am telling you. I believe you. I believe you guys are going to win this game. And part of the reason why, of course, you started 1-5 in five and have since won 10 out of 11. Something happened. I don't know if it was the locker room, the field, the huddle, all of the above. What would you point to as the biggest reason this team turned it around? I think it's just the guys in the locker room. Uh, I genuinely mean that when I say I've never been a part of a locker room like this. And uh, even we were 1-5, in five, the locker room stayed the same. So, uh, you know... We kept the faith in ourselves, and so did Coach Wright. And we start making a little bit more plays at the end instead of beating ourselves at the end. And I think that's really the biggest thing for the turnaround. Naeem, I, you know, this team is such a fun story, and it's been such a great ride. But here come the Kansas City Chiefs awaiting you. And the Kansas City Chiefs are the number one seed, and they play in a building that has some of the loudest fans in America. And there are a lot of people just saying, hey, the Chiefs are going to take care of business, and this is Patrick Mahomes' year. Let me ask you, as a member of the Indianapolis Colts, who's been hearing that all week, what your response is to that and what the Colts locker room believes their shots are going into this weekend's contest. Uh, honestly, I don't think we've really listened to the outside world, honestly. Uh, we believe in ourselves. Uh, you know, we've played some great teams in this league, and they're our next big challenge. So uh, we're excited to go out there and see what we can do. But hopefully we play a great assignment on football, and if we do that, I think we can play with anybody. Thanks for being back on the show. Love having you. Great guest. Let's talk Andrew Luck, your quarterback, for a second. One of the friendliest guys in the league. He's, like, irritatingly nice. I've never seen him mad. When was the first time you ever saw your quarterback mad? Uh, I definitely saw Andrew Luck mad when I missed the hot throw. Um, you know, when it's a hot throw, that means it's probably a free guy running at him. And uh, if you're the hot throw, at least if he throws it to you, you catch the ball. At least he's a little bit, you know, kind of taking a hit off of him. But when he gets hit and it's an incomplete, pla incomplete pass, you know, it kind of makes him a little bit upset. Love that. Uh, I also want to ask you about your bye week because most dudes relax. They go on vacation, hang out with the fam. You spent yours doing something else. Can you tell me about your week with Bojangles? Um... But I worked at Bojangles uh, during my bye week. It was uh, fun. I've always wanted to do franchising and own a McDonald's or a Bojangles, so uh, I wanted to take a step towards that. Uh, you know, I wanted to start making relationships and networking, so uh, I thought it was a, a good idea, and I wasn't doing anything anyway. So, I mean, I relaxed and got to work at Bojangles and actually had a little bit of stress. I, I don't see how those people do it at, you know, lunchtime or before a college football game because either of them are hard to do. <laughs> this guy's blocking D. Ford and Chris Jones this weekend. He's saying that. That's unbelievable. That lunchtime <laughs> rush to get you. I am a different dude. That's worse than picking like up the blitz. Different here. This, you're the best, man. You, you also mentioned, speaking of different dudes, you mentioned assignment football. There's a player on your team named Quentin Nelson whose assignment is to destroy the world on every single play. We get a huge rise out of him. You're part of the rookie class with him, one of the best classes in the league. Tell us about Quentin Nelson. We saw him absolutely obliterate a freak athlete like Jadevian Clowney. What's the craziest thing you've seen Quentin Nelson do? Oh, look at this block. <laughs> Tell us, oh, Nahim. Uh, well, first off, I think just honestly, it's an honor to play with Quentin. Uh, Quentin's probably one of the nicest guys on the team. And uh, Quinn's always been like that guy. He's the first person there when you score, first person there to pick you up. But I think the craziest thing I saw was uh, on Sunday night when we played Tennessee. Like, that's really like the first time I think live I just saw him destroying people. Uh, like, the first two drives of the game, like, every time I looked up on a Jumbotron, he was just driving somebody in the ground. And I think uh, I, knew, I know how good he is, but that's the first time I actually noticed it, like, in person. Normally I see him just drive somebody in the ground on film, but I keep looking up at the Jumbotron to see, seeing, you know, Quinn just – putting their best player in the ground or their best defensive lineman, I'm sitting there like, holy cow, I'm glad he's on our side of the ball.
<laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Well, I, I remember at one point in the season, I said, holy cow, on one of your plays. So before we let you go, yeah. I wanted you to know that we didn't forget about one of the best toe drag swags of the season earlier this year up against the Texans. Let's take a look at this play because, I mean, this kind of blew our minds. Here it is right here. Andrew Luck dropping back, oh, stepping wow. up in the pocket, and a beautiful dot. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about this play, Naeem. Oh, that play has a special play in my heart. Has a special play in my heart. I don't Why? think I'll ever forget this play. Just, uh, you know, I did against a great defender. I actually grew up, you know, I used to grow up and go in, like, to sports bars looking at uh, Honey Badger. I used to go watch him all the time and then to have the honor to play on him and, you know, score. I thought that was uh, really big, you know. I always want to talk to him after the game and, like, you know, ask for a jersey swap. But, you know, I got to make a, more, a couple more plays to get that from him. But, you know, I thought it was pretty cool and I was really excited. I didn't know I was going to come down with the ball, but sometimes, you know, great things just happen. Well, given how you started off your career, I'm pretty sure he would give you his jersey. But since you don't have his jersey, I'm going to give you this limited edition toe drag <laughs> swag sweater because it ooh. is the snow drag swag that you, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh is right. So I'm going to send ooh. this to you. It might not be a Honey Badger jersey, but it was one of the best toe drag <laughs> swags of the season. So we'll get this out to you ASAP, man. All right, buddy? Oh, Thank you so much. You know, they say we look alike, so, you know, I'm just excited to have your face on. You're, you're a very good-looking guy, so. I, 